Welcome to our very first straight talk with Suzanne Davis, the first I've ever done, and the first, as I know anyway, as uh, as Greenville University president. So I want to introduce myself. I am currently serving as uh, Greenville University's president. I'm excited to be here. This is, of course, a place that's near and dear to my heart as an alum. And I hope it's uh, near and dear to all of yours. Um, so really, this has been an opportunity just to get to know all of you a little bit better, answer some of your questions. This is something that we've actually been doing for a little over two years with employees at Greenville. So both faculty and staff would log on every week on Fridays, typically at 1230. Um, and it would just give us an opportunity to talk about things, especially during the pandemic when stress was high and there were just a lot of things going on. It increased transparency with each other, with me, gave everyone an opportunity to ask questions and we could communicate more broadly, especially in an ever-changing COVID environment. It made it very important to understand all of the latest news about COVID, but it wasn't just that. We got an opportunity to celebrate wins together and sometimes even grieve losses together. As, as many of you know, we had some significant losses during the past two years of what I would call Greenville greats, people who were just so uh, critical to the institution, but it gave us an opportunity to, to think through what is what does the future look like and what are the next steps and, and just get a lot of feedback from all of our faculty and staff across the campus. And so we thought it might be interesting to go live with all of you because it feels like we're a little out of touch with our uh, alumni, with prospective students and their families, with uh, any other stakeholders, even our local community. Again, it's been so hard to gather people together and have the same types of events with food and lots of people crammed together as we used to do pre-COVID. And so um, although we still want to do that and through the course of these live streams, we'll be inviting you to different events across the nation where you can gather, we wanted to at least take this opportunity where everyone's getting a little bit more used to Facebook, especially as we went to church oftentimes uh, during the pandemic on Facebook, we thought we'd take this opportunity to get to know you better and what matters to you and communicate all the great news of what's been going on at GU during the pandemic. In fact, we're breaking some of the trends actually during the pandemic. Uh, enrollment generally across the nation has been down on average 5% since the beginning of the pandemic, and we're actually up 6% in enrollment. Um, a lot of times we're not, the, the institutions weren't seeing an uptick in new enrollment, and we are seeing an uptick in new enrollment for this coming fall, as well as meeting all of our fundraising goals, and then some. We set a stretch goal of 30 million on our campaign, and we're only two and a half years in, and we're at 36 million. So we'll be, we'll be uh, extending that campaign and, and, of course, increasing that amount. But it's just we need a platform just to share with all of you what's going on and, and hopefully create a shared vision for the future through our strategic action planning process, which we'll be talking about even more next week. But as you have questions, the way that Straight Talk works is it's called straight talk just because I like to give it to people straight. I'm a really transparent person. I don't mind answering questions on the fly. So if you have questions, just put them in the comment section of Facebook. I think we know how to do this now, but you can just put it in the comment section and I will get those and I will answer some of the questions. Maybe not all of them. I may save some towards the end or I may have to um, go to the next week, but we will be doing this all the way through commencement. So for the next seven weeks, we will go live every Friday at 3.30. So even if you have a question in between times, you can always type it in or private message us. If you want to um, just send something more private, you can do that as well. Uh, and you can really engage in this process. You can help us by liking this 
event, liking the page and sharing it with others. So there's options on, on Facebook to do that. So if you like and share, that will just help us engage with more people. So if you know people in your groups of influence, whether it's a local community around Greenville, maybe it's um, other alums that you keep in touch with, if you would share it with them, that would help us out because we're really just trying to build energy, especially as we go out through the more public phase of the comprehensive campaign, we'll be inviting people to events and it would just help to keep in touch with them in that way. So we'll talk about what we're doing well, we'll talk about what we could improve on as an institution um, and, and literally just why we believe that what we're doing matters to God. I really believe that what we do at GU, both when I was a student, when many of you engage Greenville University, it, we believe it matters to God. And we actually believe that we're adding to the very soul of society, like near and far here, all across the nation, all across the globe. I just can't even tell you how many times I'm in an airport and someone will see my Greenville University shirt and they will say, oh my goodness, that place just shaped me so deeply and who I am. And so I thought I might start off just by talking a little bit about who I am and why I believe this matters so much to God because it, it, it matters to me and I have great passion for Greenville University. However, I don't know that I actually said it best. I think my student assistant um, expressed this better than I did um, when she just simply said, I found Jesus here. It's just holy ground. People find Jesus here um, through the people that are the hands and feet, the faculty and staff that just pour out their lives. And that's what happened for me. I was uh, what you might call a prodigal. I was running from all sorts of things. I wouldn't have even called myself a Christian when I came to Greenville University. But my brothers and my dad were actually passing away um, from a horrific genetic disease with my brothers and, and my dad passing away from, from uh, cancer. And that's when I came to Greenville University. I actually didn't come uh, for really great reasons. Uh, it was partly because they were, I was close to Barnes Hospital and could go across the river um, most nights. Um, but it was also because uh, if any of you know Coach Patton, Brian Patton, he called me incessantly. You might know that he's kind of like that. And so he called me incessantly to come and run track. And so I did that um, when a D1 scholarship fell through. I was like, well, I'll go here. And I sat in the back of chapel. But as I was grieving and really grappling with um, just the reality of life that we're but a mist, we're here for a little while and then we're gone. I was dealing with that and people took the time. Rick McPeak for one, took the time to just sit with me in the union and talk about what matters most. Um, I went on a trip with him uh, to Chicago. It was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I went uh, and stayed in a hostel and we went to all these places of worship, world religion. Like I said, I was, I was not really certain that there was a God. And if there was a God, I was not certain that he was a good God and that we were worshiping in a Christian uh, atmosphere. And so going to all these world religions and really seeking truth on, on my terms and getting it straight in my head um, was not just a one-time event. It was a process, but that experience of going to Chicago, staying in a hostel, going to all these places of worship, it was transformative, more than I even knew at the time. And it allowed me to find my own faith and, and what I believe. Um, and so coming back to Greenville University has, has been a little bit surreal. I didn't actually plan on coming back first as faculty and, and then into administration and now as president, but it reminds me of, of kind of three things that have been um, rules of thumb or life lessons for me. And I found that they are um, just really where I'm leading from, the heart of where I'm leading from. So the three things that I tend to think about are with many advisors, plans succeed. 
which is one of the reasons why we're doing this Facebook Live. It's not my favorite thing to do to go on video, just FYI, um, especially not on Facebook. I'm not, I was a late adopter to Facebook, but in any case, I do believe that with many advisors, plans succeed. So if we're going to do an action plan, if we're gonna do a campaign, if we're gonna provide the best immersive experience for students in the most interconnected campus that we can be, we need all of you because that's how plans succeed. That's a proverb and, and, and I believe in that one. I also believe that seed must fall onto good soil. So my second rule of thumb is that we have to be good soil. And sometimes that means that we have to be doing just processes and financial decisions well. We have to be able to receive, we have to have those good bones of our mission statement so clearly put out there, which is empowering students for lives of Christ-like character and service. That's what we do. We have to be clear about our good soil. And then finally, we have to serve, not be served. And the students that we're looking for and the students who are here, they have that propensity. We've been doing our scholarshiping based on that, where people who can look outside of themselves to others and how they can uniquely shape the world, that's what we've been looking for. And sometimes that's difficult because some students are overcoming adversity, just like I was at the time with the grief that I was dealing with in my family. I think sometimes that means that we're overcomers of adversity. And, and then sometimes it means once we get our lifeboat secured, those, those same people who have overcome adversity will, will work to serve others. And so sometimes we're even encouraging our students to go the next step because they do have their lifeboat secure and they can help others. And so we're reconcilers, we're bridge builders. We are people who lean into the conversation. Nothing is too hard. That's why we're here as well. We wanna lean into the conversation. There is no question that is off limits because we are people of the both and, and maybe we won't always agree, but we believe that we can build a bridge and that we can find common ground because there is such a thing as holy ground. Um, and in grace and truth, we can do that in the free Methodist, affiliation that has been part of this institution for 130 years. It's good philosophy. It's good theology for this time and this place of the via media, the, the messy middle of our experience and how that intersects with tradition and with uh, reason, but primarily with scripture as our guide. And so we believe in experience because that is part of the Wesleyan way. Um, so during this time, we're going to talk about uh, some of the strategies and things moving forward. Uh, we're going to talk about the three eyes. I, I guess I'm all about threes right now, but the three eyes are not like eyes that you see with, but I, the letter I. So the three I words brought to you by the letter I are going to be innovation. It's going to be the interconnectedness, this concept, like with many advisors, plan succeed. We want to be interconnected, not just internally, but externally. And we want to do ex experiential learning well. And experiential learning, that's an E word, but it's immersive. And that's why I think we've done over time so many things that actually immerse students into an experience that then they're able to reflect and grow and really build depth of character as well as that ability to look outside themselves. So we'll be looking at that particular um, word and the three words together next week um, in, our, in our next straight talk. But I wanna give you opportunity to uh, maybe ask some questions. I'm gonna look to see if we have some questions here. Um, all right. Uh, oh, so maybe why, where am I at? Uh, people wonder actually, where am I standing? That is an interesting question. And, and uh, why am I standing? <laughs> I don't know why I'm standing other than I talk with my hands and it seems easier when I'm standing. Um, and so that's why. But where I'm standing is actually in the Smart Center on the town square, which many of you maybe haven't seen the Smart Center, but was one of the largest buildings on the town square. And during the pandemic, we received a grant from the Economic Development Administration. And we were able to put that money into renovating this space. And it frankly, probably 
would have never been renovated if it weren't for the CDA grant and the willingness of the college to put the money in. But it's an old brick structure and it houses on the first floor a restaurant called Toasties. It has a large video wall. And that has become a place where community members and students and campus events can be held. Um, it is, it's run by uh, Greenville University and, and actually a lot of students are able to work in the space. So that's an extra benefit, especially international students uh, because they have to work for us as opposed to other entities for their F1 visas. And so that's on the first floor. I just had a great Greenville's Got Talent event um, a few weeks ago. I had members of the community and members of our student body. It's kind of a liminal space where that kind of thing can happen. Um, and then the second floor has a conference space. That's actually one of the spaces I'm standing in. So you can rent it out for conference uh, meeting space. You can uh, rent out office space. It's actually a, a place where students can uh, start businesses. We have a few students who are members of our entrepreneurial uh, program and, and, and innovation space on the second floor. And then on the third floor is a larger meeting space and it's got the 10 ceilings. Actually, the, the room I'm standing in has the re refer refer. 10 ceilings, refurbished 10 ceilings, and they look great. And so it's interesting because it's a mix of old and modern with big video walls and things like that. Um, but it's been an interesting space to engage with the community. And then on the in the basement, it's actually our esports hub. So there's an esports team in the basement and um, they're using the building all hours of the night. Um, you can usually find someone here and we find that this is a good space to have these straight talks, but we will actually go on the road as well. So as you keep uh, joining these live streams, you might see that we'll go up to Chicago in a couple of weeks where uh, we purchase the Contemporary Music uh, Center. Some of you know, uh, Warren Pettit, who runs that, and he is going to be up in Chicago with his uh, group of students, the group of students that are part of that best semester program, um, and they're going to be doing a concert. So I think we're going to visit them, and I'll be live with Warren that particular week. I think I'll be in Houston another week, so I'll just find solid Wi-Fi, and we'll give it a shot. But this building really is special, and it does have solid Wi-Fi, so that's why I'm in this particular space. So yeah, remember that again, you can write in the comment section if you have questions. I'm not seeing um, any come through right now. You don't have to write a question, but you can ask me anything. If you're just curious uh, why I'm uh, excited about Greenville, maybe who I am, what I'm, uh, what I'm up to, but um, yeah, so I serve as president and I, I enjoy um, just being here at my alma mater. I, it wasn't what I necessarily intended to do. I was practicing law and um, ended up teaching actually because um, I wanted more time with uh, my daughters. We adopted um, 14 year old girls and, and they're, doing, they're doing phenomenal. And they actually also came to Greenville University. So that was special. I met my husband at Greenville University. Most people know Phil actually more than me. So Phil Davis is, is the official first gentleman. Uh, some of the students like to call him the first dude, um, I'm not, whatever you want to go with. Uh, but he is the first first man, I believe. And so that's kind of exciting too. Um, yeah, so there's another question coming in that says, is it true that students are getting bathrooms out at the athletic fields? That's great. More than bathrooms. It's actually going to be kind of showcase space. We'll go live from that area at some point if we get good enough Wi-Fi. But what that's going to be is not just bathrooms, but it's going to be grandstands, concessions, uh, weight room. Yeah, I said it. The annex will have not the annex equipment, but better workout equipment that will be at this field house. Um, there will be uh, locker rooms uh, for the football team, coaches' offices, and then what is really special about it is a Hall of Fame where um, it's going to be recognizing uh, athletes, but also just leaders of all kinds of Christian character and service. This was something near and dear 
to uh, the late Ish Smith. And as you know, Dr. Smith was president. He was actually president when I was a student and he passed away um, over this past year. And he had wanted to donate a lot of his memorabilia. If you know him, he was big in sports, um, actually was responsible for starting Olympic baseball. Um, and he's donating some of his memorabilia. There's others in, uh, who are donating things like the first official scoreboard for basketball gyms. Um, as you know, Nevco is here in town. And so uh, we're gonna honor people in that space. So it won't just be a museum. It's gonna be a, a showcase for all of the athletes and the leaders in sport and in um, just Christian circles and, and how they've impacted their areas in all aspects of society. So not just through ministry, but through even sports and entertainment and things like that. So another question I'm getting is, can you speak to how uh, GU interfaces with Greenville, the community? Well, one, one way is through this space um, that I'm standing in right here. This has really been a catalyst to some downtown square development. And that's something we'll actually be talking about. I, I will likely bring in um, Breck Nelson, who is our head of economic development and innovation. And essentially his role is gonna be managing some of these capital projects. We also have a capital project that will uh, come right up against the town square. So if you think about our main campus, it, the, the main campus has kind of historically been at College and Elm Street, but we're really through our master planning moving towards College and Second Street, which if you know, Second Street is the town square. So we have a building construction site that will be a little bit closer to, to campus on First Street, but that whole College Avenue will really be transformed and be a gateway to the campus but it's also meant to symbolically be that the campus is leaving the building. <laughs> We're not just going to be insular. We want to look out into the community and fill a need, whether that's through a business venture, through a, a social organization, filling some need in the community. We actually are partnering with core community and providing scholarships for some of the students and the families that they come across. We're partnering um, with, of course, the Simple Room, which was a very immersive experiential learning opportunity that was created years and years ago, but has now grown into an amazing after school tutoring um, facility and um, lots of people that work there and lots of our students who continue to intern and volunteer and serve there. We're working with the school district in, in a KRP. It's a kindergarten readiness program that actually allows our education students to serve some of the more disadvantaged uh, early childhood uh, students in our community. And so it really is kind of a new day where uh, the Lord has just shown us ways to reach out and partner, um, even offering testing to the local community when they didn't have that available. We got them, uh, the school district and some of the workers ID cards to be able to test for our unit. I don't know if everybody knows, but we actually partnered with the University of Illinois and we were their sole research partner actually in the saliva testing program that allowed us to stay open literally every day of the pandemic, except for the spring of 2020 when everything shut down. But we hit the ground running um, that fall because we were able to do the saliva testing program. We performed over 40,000 tests uh, of our students, faculty, staff, and like I said, the local community who was able to use that um, and, and again, um, stay open during a pandemic, which made it um, very difficult, of course, for most. And so we're very thankful. The community uh, just continues to support Greenville University and we want to support them as well. And I think, I think there's a uh, great town gown relationship right now that's happening. So uh, it sounds like someone wants to know, uh, will some of the uh, topics that I plan to touch on, what will be some of the topics that I plan to touch on during the Friday series? So there's several things we're gonna talk about, as I said, kind of the three eyes. And so what do I mean by being innovative? What do I mean 
by being interconnected and what are some of those connections? I've alluded to some of them already. Uh, and then what do we mean by immersive experiential learning? So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of our uh, capital projects that are the expansion of the campaign. As I said, we exceeded our goals. So we want to expand even more into the capital phase. And so we'll talk about what all that is going to be and some of the developments that are happening on the town square, on the campus, at the athletic fields. It's way more than restrooms. Um, and, and what's happening uh, around town even with some new programming. So we'll talk about how we've launched into gymnastics, which maybe is news to some. And the, we'll show the renovation of that building. And then also what we're doing in Nashville, as I talked a little bit about that, but we'll talk more about Nashville and what we're doing in Dallas and potentially some other cities that would provide more experience for students. And so we'll actually go on the road in some of those locations, whatever I'm uh, there, and, I'll, and we'll talk to some of those, those people as well. And then we'll engage as, as people continue to comment and share the page and we get more feedback, we'll actually play it by ear and we'll see what you all are interested in talking about uh, because it's not that we have a, a set agenda, it's just a, a few topics that we think everyone would want to know about. And then we'll open it up to some of the things that you would like to talk about. So if you have an idea, a suggestion for what you'd like to hear more about, then we can do that during uh, a future episode. But the, the main idea is to just get together, talk about some of the future planning, talk about some of the things going on um, around campus and, and reconnect with all of you. So that really is um, what we came to do today. I don't see too many more questions uh, coming through. So I think we'll just end it with a with a little bit of a quote, I will say one thing we will talk about is the Wednesday experience, which is kind of a rebirth of the chapel programming with Pastor David Hawkins. And he's a pastor out of um, the Metro East area. Uh, and he is just full of energy. And I always love how he ends uh, every single service that we do in the gym and all of our faculty, staff and students come. We have like 950 people in the gym. And every Wednesday, he says at the very end, he says, and go change the world. So go change the world, GU.